This is Josh Blackman. I'm on the phone with Zach Parker. Zach is a high school student in Maine who has a very interesting idea. He responded to the case of Snyder v. Phelps and the Westboro Baptist who protest military funerals with an innovative idea. And Zach's here today to talk to us about this and tell us what he thinks. Hey, Zach, how's it going? I'm good, Josh. How are you? I'm doing excellent. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a high school senior um, at Searsport High School, which is in the Midcoast, Maine area in Searsport. And I was handed this project um, as a senior government class project, and I kind of took it and ran with it. So what, what exactly was the project? So, Josh, the, the project was to go ahead and take a political action project, uh, which is a political action um that you want to take. So it's like taking a political or social issue in the United States and acting upon it um, to see if you can get a result that you're satisfied with. Um, I went ahead and like many of us teenagers went online and were like, how are we going to do this? We, we don't even know how to get any um, ideas. So of course, like all of us teenagers usually do nowadays, we go ahead and get on Google and we look. Well, this is one that kind of caught my eye. And as I um, went on and read about it, I found out that the main um, ob- the main objection um, of these people um, protesting is to protest against government decisions at funerals. It wasn't something that I was very satisfied with. Um, I was actually disgusted and infuriated with it. So I decided that I wanted to go ahead and try to put federal legislation in place um, so that people can't go ahead and protest at military funerals. Uh-huh. And what has the response been since you proposed this legislate or since you proposed this project? Um, it's been very supportive, actually. A lot of people are very supportive. They're just kind of wondering where does this fall on the constitutional lines, um, and a lot of people are saying, um, does this infringe on people's right of freedom of speech? It doesn't. It doesn't, as far as I'm concerned. What it does infringe on, though, um, the people that are protesting, they're infringing on people's right to gather peacefully um, and the right to privacy. I mean, when you have somebody in the background hollering and shouting and and saying obscene and vulgar things and displaying these signs. Um, that's not letting the family uh, gather peacefully and mourn peacefully, and it's not a private setting. Okay, very good. Let's just take a step back, and we'll talk about the Supreme Court case of Snyder versus Phelps, and I'm sure you follow that case closely, right? Yeah, I have. <clears throat> Tell me a little bit about your understanding of the case and what you think about it and how you think the Supreme Court will resolve it. Well, I can tell you that I, I I don't know I don't know the big details of it, but I can tell you that I have been in contact with Al Snyder, who is one of the Snyder family uh, members um, who is in the case. And as far as I know, and I'm if I'm informed correctly, uh, Matthew Snyder came home um, from he died in combat, and when he had his funeral, the Westboro Baptist Church. Um, was protesting at the event, and the Snyder family felt that they were infringing on their right to gather peacefully um, and and the right to privacy, and they decided they were going to sue the court. Um, uh, Excuse me, sue the the family. And I can tell you that the court's decision, um, I can't really tell you the court's decision, but after reading about it um, and hearing the audio from it, I'm kind of worried. I'm hoping that the Supreme Court justices will take time um, and look at the Constitution, and I have full faith in them that they'll do um, what they're there to do, and I hope that they choose um, the right decision. So you've identified two constitutional values, uh, the right of free association and the right of freedom of speech. The Baptists have a right to speak freely, and the the, the Snyders uh, have the right to uh, freely assemble. How do you think the courts should balance those two competing interests? Well, I can tell you, Josh, that the th- this is where it draws the line. In, in the United States, we have the disorderly conduct law. And under the disorderly conduct law, um, it clearly states that um, people can't use abusive, indecent, profane, or vulgar language in a public place. They can't make offensive gestures. They can't abuse or threaten a person in a public place. And they can't make unreasonable noise. As far as I'm concerned, they're, they are infringing on all of those. They're going against the whole disorderly conduct law. And that right there falls under your First Amendment rights, to gather peacefully, to protest, to do whatever. I understand that everybody has the right to protest, but the concern is is that when you're exercising your right and your right is infringing on somebody else's right, that's where the, lo- the line needs to be drawn. I mean, you cannot exercise your right if it's going to infringe on somebody else's rights. 
So how would you respond then to uh, people who might say that your, your, your proposed bill is, is very broad and, and perhaps unconstitutional? Um, I, I would I would sit down with them and ask them to look at the Constitution with me and see where it says that. Um, I, I can tell you, Josh, that it's a, it's a really, really fine line, and, and it's confusing at times for me. But, I mean, if it, it clearly says in the amendment that, I mean, we can't put any law in place. I mean, if I'm looking at it right now... Um, I mean, you can't go ahead and put any law in place that infringes on somebody else's rights. It says right here, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right to people peacefully to assemble. So by putting this law in place, I'm th- I, I believe that it's backing up the amendment um, of the Bill of Rights. I mean, it's not allowing people to protest at the funerals, so it's therefore protecting people's right to gather um, peacefully. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Now, uh, you obviously have a very deep grasp about the Constitution. Um, I can ask you, what would you recommend to other people your age? Because unfortunately, there's a large amount of uh, disinterest and boredom among high school students about the Constitution at the Supreme Court. What would you recommend to your friends around the country who are your age who wanna, maybe aren't quite as interested in this stuff as you are? Um, I guess I could say that if you're interested in something enough that you want to see a result come from it, that you need to work for what you want. I can tell you that when this, when I went into class that day and the bell rang, my first period class, when I went in and this got handed to me and we started going over it, it was an overwhelming project. But when you get it, when I got into it, I felt that there was no other option but to get this publicized out in the community um, and see if I could actually get a result from it. And I feel I'm getting a result from it. So if people want to see a result from their project, I can say act on it as much as you can and take it, take it and go running with it. Um, if you don't, um, just do the project. But I feel that if you really, really want to see something happen from something, which I think most high school students do, um, to go ahead and go running with the project. Wonderful. Wonderful. What do you see yourself doing uh, in the future? Um, I really don't know. I can tell you that um, I do like political science. Um, I've been accepted to college for criminal justice. Um, I, I really don't know at this point. I mean, obviously right now I'm just a 17-year-old political activist here in Maine, um, and I'll probably be a political activist the rest of my life. Oh, wonderful. Well, I wish there were more people like you who stood up, recognized a problem, and tried something about it. Zach, thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate chatting with you. Great. Thanks, Josh. All right, Zach. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Thanks.